Hey everyone, so I thought I'd talk about the uh, Supreme Court case tomorrow for student debt cancellation that President Biden has been planning for quite some time now. So the main thing uh, to watch out for is this argument of the major questions doctrine. So the question is, is did Congress you know, give power to the executive branch to cancel $400 billion of student loans or not? And so a lot of this is going to be determined on whether or not the um, Supreme Court thinks the major question doctrine applies. So this is something that the Supreme Court has used to rein in other uses of executive power in the past. Um, specifically, if you look at like the EPA versus West Virginia, there was some you know strong regulations that were put down and the state of West Virginia challenged it saying that no way did Congress delegate these powers to the executive branch. And the Supreme Court agreed and kind of lined out this, you know, this, this, con, um, this basically this uh, concept of the major questions doctrine. So that's one thing to watch out for. The other thing to watch out for is whether or not the plaintiffs bringing the suit have standing. So specifically, legal standing means you have to be able to show a harm to be able to justify bringing a lawsuit. And so these people involved in the lawsuit are basically saying that because the um, student loan servicer Mohila is an arm of the state of Missouri, that therefore Mohila you know, experienced harm, or would, would experience harm from this cancellation lawsuit, i.e. they would lose customers and lose revenue. And if that's the case, then that means that the state of Missouri is therefore harmed and has standing to bring the lawsuit. Um, other, the other case that was brought, uh, was brought by two individuals basically stating that they were harmed by not getting um, 20,000 of cancellation and not getting any cancellation. And so these are two individuals bringing a case, which is somewhat unusual for two individuals to have standing. Um, so this is just really fascinating, I think, uh, just in terms of, you know, the questions of standing are very major questions and could pose a lot of risks down the road. If the Supreme Court gives standing to these uh, plaintiffs, then that means that other cases could get standing for, you know, kind of odd plaintiffs and, and you really could open Pandora's box. So that's something that, you know, is really worth considering with the Supreme Court case um, is if they'll find standing or not. So first, first issue is, does the major questions doctrine apply? Second issue is, is there standing from the plaintiffs? So if, if basically the, both of those answers is, is yes, Supreme Court's almost surely going to shoot this down. It's a 6-3 conservative majority in the Supreme Court. So what are the chances that they will let the student debt cancellation stand if they essentially find that either the plaintiffs don't have standing or if they find that, you know, this major question doctrine applies and therefore standing's not all that important, that standing, you know, is just sort of, you know, if they have enough standing or something like that, right? I mean, it's sort of like, you know, almost kind of rush to the argument instead of looking in great detail about whether or not the, uh, you know, the question applies. So in terms of what might happen, what the Biden administration is going to argue, they're going to argue that the, um, the HEROES Act gives the power, uh, broad power to the president to make sure the borrowers are no worse off due to a national emergency, which the pandemic is. And what they're going to say is that if other, in other periods of national emergency, uh, the default rate uh, spiked after the end of the, uh, of, the national, of the forbearance due to the emergency. And so therefore, the only way to make sure that borrowers are not worse off is to cancel a lot of debt for borrowers, especially those with the lower income side of the scale, to make sure that default rates don't spike uh, after the end of the pause. So we will see if uh, the Supreme Court is um, you know, at all sympathetic to these arguments. I'm not so sure that they will be. Uh, if you want to listen to the arguments, you can basically just search for an internet live stream around 10 a.m. Eastern time. Maybe it might go off as late as 11 a.m. Eastern time. So I think this is going to be a really fascinating case. And remember that student loans are supposed to start again 60 days after the Supreme Court makes up its mind in this case. So we will see you know, what happens uh, on this. I think that we're going to see a decision maybe sometime in May or June. And you know, the, like many cases, the judge's... Um, tone is going to tell us a whole lot about what's going to happen in terms of which way the case is most likely to go. So if you all have any comments, post them in the, in the uh, comment section below. Thanks for watching uh, Student Loan Planners content.